Welcome to October's LeetCo Challenge. Today's problem is serialize and deserialize BST. Serialization is converting a data structure or object into a sequence of bits so that it can be stored in a file or memory buffer. Blah blah blah. Design an algorithm to serialize and deserialize a binary search tree. There is no restriction on how your algorithm should work. You need to ensure that a binary search tree can be serialized to a string and this string can be deserialized to the original tree structure. So the input is guaranteed to be a binary search tree. So that helps, obviously. Um, here is an example binary search tree. And you can see that the input is given to us in more of a breadth first search format, where it's gonna be five, three, seven, one, four. But when we serialize it, we can only traverse the binary tr search tree in three ways. We could either go in order, which would end up being like one, three, four, five, seven. Uh, we can go post order, which would end up being like one, four, three, seven, five, or we can go pre-order, which would be like five, three, one, four, seven. So I think probably the best way is to go pre-order. You can make post order work as well by going backwards with our list, but that kind of gets confusing with the left and right part. So I think pre-order will work fine. So let's go to the notepad and think about how we might do this. Say we had my example and we had the numbers five, five, three, seven, one, four. And if we visualized that, it would look something like five, three, seven, one, and four. Now, if we were to go pre-order, what would it look like? Well, we can create a list going in pre-order pre -order traversal, and it would look something like five, three, and then we go left again, one, now we move to the right, four, go back up and move to the right, seven. So you can see that the order is different from our input. Now, all we need to do here is convert our list into a string somehow, and now we need to reconvert that string to a list and rebuild our data structure. So luckily, we have the root, so we can just start here with five. So I'm five. And now as long as the number that comes after is less than the number that we just entered, we would know it to move it to add it to the left, right? So this can go on for a long time, like five, three, as long as the number is decreasing. It's only when the number is increasing here that we need to start moving it to the right. So we move four here to the right. So that sounds pretty simple enough, but there's a problem here. There's a big problem actually, which is, well, how do we know which node to add this right side to? Left side's easy. As long as the number is smaller, we can just go left, left, left all the way. But what about the right? So, I mean, say we had an example like 10, seven, five, one, and then our next number was eight. Well, if we used this, easy algorithm, eight will be added here. And we can clearly see that this is wrong. This should not be the case. Eight should be added here. So what that's gonna require then is us to remember the parent node that we came from, or at least the value that it came from. So this would kind of be the upper bound. And the number below that would be the lower bound. Now when we have number eight, what we check to see is, hey, is this eight within the lower and upper bound? And we can clearly see eight is not, right? So we just move on ahead. We add this, nothing gonna be added here. Now we'll check this. Now this is gonna be the upper bound in our recursive call. And this will be the lower bound. Now is eight within this range? And yes, it is. So we know add eight here. So every time we add to the left, we will check to see if it is within our bounds. And we first go to the left side all the way up until like we find that it's no longer in the bounds here. So with eight, we'll see clearly that, okay, it's not within, you know, um, five to whatever none here. It's not gonna be in here. So we check here, uh, is it within seven and one? No, it's not here. 10 and five, oh, yes it is, add it there. So knowing that, then we can 
realize we need to store some sort of upper and lower bound and just move through our list in pre-order and we should be able to create our binary search tree. So I realize that's pretty confusing, um, but hopefully as we code it out, it'll begin to make a little more sense. Uh, let's first start by serializing. And like I said, we want to go pre-order, right? So what we can do is start with a self variable and we'll call this LST, make that a blank list. And we'll create a function called that first search where we pass in the node. So this is pretty standard. If not node, we simply return. Otherwise, we add our node's value to our list. Next, we move to the left side. And next, we move to the right side. And after that, we should have all our node values created in a list in pre-order Jurassic, pre-order. Now we need to convert this into a string. So how can we do that? Well, to do that, um, I think what I'm going to do is use the string join method, put commas in between our integer values, and we will say, join these values. We need to convert them into back into a string, or we need to convert these integers to a string. So I guess we can say map string our self.list. And we want to return this string. Okay, so let's make sure this works. Uh, I'm just going to print the data here, which should be a string. And this should look like just a bunch of commas. Mm, that did not work. Oh, of course, we need to actually call the function. And there we go. This is my standard out, 53147. So that is in pre-order. Great. So now the hard part. We want to deserialize this string. So the very first thing we can do is convert this back into a list. So we have our data. Let's use the split method to split this into a list. And we want to reconvert these back into integers, right? So for data in data split, we will convert this into an integer. And now this will be our list. So now we have it back into a list. So this is the part that's going to be hard. We need to write some sort of recursive function that's going to pass in the list as well as the lower and upper bounds. And in the very beginning, our lower and upper bounds are going to be infinite. It'll be negative infinity and infinity. That way we know we can always add it. Okay, so the first thing we need to check is some base cases. If not list, if there's nothing there, obviously just return nothing, return none. Now we need to make sure this value is within our range. And we have our list, so it's going to be the first value in there. So what we'll say is if not, say lower uh, list that value, and I believe this is now an integer, so that should work. If it's not within our bounds that we pass in, we also return a none. Now let's build up our tree. So the very first thing we want to do is pop off the first object inside of our list. We'll call it candidate, and we'll say pop off the first one. Now let's form our root. It's going to be called tree node with our candidate value. Right now we need to call our recursive function and to do that, we can just say, okay, pass in the left, our recursive function, we're going to pass in our list. Now that we've popped off this object and we need to pass in our lower and upper bound, right? So our lower bound is still whatever it was before. It's our upper bound that's changed now, and that's going to be the root dot value. And the root dot right, it's going to be the same thing. We pass in our list, but instead of this lower bound uh, being lower, it's now going to be the root dot value. And this will still be upper. 
Finally, um, once we finish our request of the call, we just return our root. And that would be it. So this is the tricky part, like knowing that it's going to always go to the left as long as the values are less because we're, um, you know, we're changing the upper bound to a root value. So as long as it's less, it's going to just continue going left. As soon as we find that that's not true, we'll start trying to check to the right and add it to the right side. Uh, but we need to make sure that it's within the bounds of from our parent to our uh, left child leaf node, whatever. Um, and if it's not, then we'll just continue up the tree to see where we can add it. And because this is a binary search tree, this works. Um, now we'll just say, okay, call our recursive function list and let's call a float for negative infinity. We'll make that a negative. And our upper will be upper, like positive infinity. And this will return the root, so we just return whatever gets returned in our function. All right, so let's see if this works. And it looks like it's working, so that's great. Uh, there is one edge case here. If we pass in a blank list, though, I believe this errors out because we try to convert empty strings into integers. So just to comp just to take care of that, we'll say if not blank string, then just return none. That should take care of that. All right, so let's go and submit it. And there we go. Now, in terms of time complexity, this is an O of n solution. We move as many nodes as there are. Um, we could have first thought to add null values to um, the children to kind of like keep the whole structure, but that is very inefficient and really doesn't take advantage of the fact that this is a binary search tree. So this um, is probably the best way to do it. And it definitely wasn't an easy algorithm. This is pretty hard to come up with, but hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.